Hey everyone, happy 2022. I know we're already halfway into January and a lot of you probably had your planner ready in October, but I wasn't able to set stuff up until the first week of January and then I got sick last weekend right when I was about to film. So definitely feeling a little behind on 2022, but the good thing is I'll have this planner for another 11 and a half months. So drop a comment, let me know how your 2022 has been so far and what planners you're using this year. This will be my second year in a Hobonichi Cousin. Last year I went with the Avec, so that's the two six-month version books, um, and this year I decided to get the full year in one book. So I'm a little nervous that it's going to get a little unwieldy by the end of the year. Um, if you look at it, these were much slimmer when they started, and now at the end they're kind of bulked up to be the same size. So. A little uh, worried to see how big this one's going to get but um, hopefully I'm going to try to use a few more stamps in it um, keep the bulk down but I also have a lot of kits to use so probably won't get too slim um, I have an A5 cover on it from Lauren Phelps Designs uh, the cover is good I like that there's kind of pockets in it so I can stick stickers in there but uh, it's a little bit tall, um, so there's a little bit more space up top than it needs to be. And so for that reason, it doesn't fit in this Motorm cover anymore, whereas the um, Midori A5 covers did. So that's just something to note um, if you're going to use another cover on top of that. So I'll slowly add stickers to the cover in the back as the year goes on, so I'm not too worried. It's a little bit blank to start. Um, but in my front cover, I have a vellum sheet tipped in. Um, this is just a sheet of vellum folded in half, and I use it to hold some sticky notes, and it's something I've done in all three of my cousin planners and love a lot. Um, so yeah. Then on the overview page, I'm currently planning to use it for when we're traveling or hosting guests. Um, I do have a A6 supplement this year, so I'm tracking all of my kind of like work-related stuff in here. Um, so I figured don't need to duplicate that. Next, we have the six-month overview pages. So in my first cousin, I used it as a bit of a habit tracker. It was fine, but I didn't love it. I also forgot to come flip open to this page to track stuff. So it wasn't super useful for me. Um, so in my last cousin, I started doing this as like a color coded index page for all the daily pages. And I like that a lot better. Um, this is kind of how it looks filled in at the end of six months. Uh, so the color coding I've changed a little bit, but it's kind of how that ended up. Um, so the top here, I'm also tracking social media stats and the bottom I'll use for keeping track of anything happening next year that I need to keep in mind. Nothing here so far. The monthly pages for me are pretty functional. Um, I use it to make sure I'm not double booked for anything, um, especially because I don't usually use the weekly spread until the week of or the week before. So. There's a few things I've started February, um, but some stuff penciled in, not a whole lot happening yet. And then the weekly pages. So the weeklies started on December 27th, but I like to keep my planners for just that year. So I covered the extra 20, 21 days with washi tape. And it's kind of pretty, but it's a little overwhelming. Um, I don't love it as much. I did this in my 2020 Passion Planner where I liked it a lot better. And I think maybe having some of that like extra space um, along the top and bottom was helpful. Um, but that is that. My first full week, I went with a stamp only spread. Uh, I have a lot of stamps and Kind of forget to use them sometimes also kind of helps to keep the bulk down and it's easier to stamp when there's not as many stickers in the planner because uh, the stickers can sometimes make the page a little weirdly bumpy so i uh, figured the first week of the year would be good to start stamp only uh, this week i'm using a cousin kit from the coffee monsters co um, it's a new chapter kit 
Uh, I also have these amazing stamps that I picked up in December and I'm using them as kind of affirmation slash mood tracking for the whole year. So the plan is to kind of use one of those each week um, in the sidebar. So I'm super excited about that because these are adorable and especially this one um, is my favorite. So yeah, I usually start setting up for the next week on Friday to Sunday. Um, so I've gotten started a little earlier than I usually do for next week. Um, I have some stickers down and then a lot of stuff is just penciled in. Uh, a lot of my work meetings get moved around a lot so I don't end up putting those down in pen until later. Um, and this also helps me figure out like where I might have extra space to put stickers down. And then yeah, so there's not much going on in there. And then between the weekly pages and the daily pages, there's these pages that actually appear as like turning the page to a new year. Um, so I'm using both of these as order trackers for 2022. Um, in both my previous planners, one page was enough. So I think hopefully this will be enough for all of the orders um, that I make this year. On my January page, I have a inventory of all of my current hair products um, based on how they're organized in my shelf. Um, I'm probably going to continue using the first of the month as a kind of overall bot list. Um, last one I had it as a bot list and wish list tracker, but I've decided to move my wish lists to um, be year long at the end of the planner. So that'll come up later. I have some to-do lists, stuff that was transferred over, hair, oil, details, some learning and projects, acrylograph swatching. I have a blank page for now. Uh, I'm not too worried about those. Um, here is going to be my nail polish tracker for the year. And then I each week have a weekly to-do list, usually on Sunday or Monday for that week. Um, I try to match the theme to the weekly spread just to kind of help my brain keep track of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, I just don't have enough extra space around um, in the sidebar and up in the bottom to do my to-do list. So it's, I find it easier to just have a page dedicated for that. Um, another blank page. I have two swatch pages here from mail that came in this week. So this is from Happy Daria's uh, Teddy Winter sub kit. This is the Coffee Monsters Co. Sleepy Time Washi. And I like doing the swatch pages on my daily pages because it gives me a way to use the things immediately when I get in. So there's nothing on the rest of the daily pages just yet, um, but there are some things back here. They're on the blank note pages. Um, so here I have a bubble tea tracker for the year. Um, I'm not sure what I'll be doing with this just yet. This is my year-long wish list. Um, I actually already picked up some stuff because Zoya had a sale. Um, the timetable page I'm using as a cleaning slash home stuff tracker for the year. Uh, the graph page is going to be a board game tracker. Sadly, I haven't played any board games yet this year, but um, that's what that will be. I'm not sure about the favorites page yet. I do like that there are 12 boxes, so I could use it for something each month. I'm just not sure what. The My 100 page I'm using as book tracking. I don't expect to read more than 50 books this year. Uh, even 50 would be a lot for me. So I covered the numbers with washi and so made it kind of a two column format. Here I have the dates that I've been reading them. Um, they get checked off when they're finished title of the book and whether it was an ebook or not. I have my 2022 TBR. Um, the, my to read list is here on these sticky notes. It looks a little less intimidating this way and I'm sure things will probably change. So it makes it easier to um, adjust as the year goes on. Here on these Japanese info pages, which I cannot read, I use them as swatch pages. So I have highlighters, um, brush pens down here, Tombos, different fine liners, my acrylographs, and different stamp inks. So this is helpful for me to see exactly how a pen or ink is going to look specifically on this planner. So there's not really any surprises there. 
These are pages actually from the Passion Planner Daily. Um, ever since they came up with it, I've been obsessed with them and have put them in every single one of my planners since. So I'm planning to use this for kind of tracking toiletries or things like changing out toothbrush heads, water filter, charging my watch, doing laundry, things like that. So I'm excited to see this page filled out at the end of the year, especially because my previous planners were just for six months. Um, so I'm excited to see how this looks. Um, oh, back here. I'm not sure about the gifts page. Maybe I'll use it. Maybe I won't. Um, here I have sort of some health tracking, so like sleep, exercise, uh, stuff like that. And then I have an address page here. I've been um, just printing this instead of rewriting addresses in um, from planner to planner, but this one, as you might be able to tell, got put in a little crooked. You know, kind of bothers me, but we're just gonna have to get over it. And then in the back here, I have a sheet of vellum. Um, and on the back is a sheet of release paper. So this will be helpful if I want to like stick a sticker that I know I'm going to use um, soon or, um, you know, take a part of sampler or something. It's easy to keep things nearby. And so, yeah, that is it. I'm excited for year two of my Hobonichi cousin. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the biggest change is that it is the full year book. So it's going to be a little bit bulkier, um, but also the addition of the 2022 um, A6 supplement. So I'm not exactly sure what I'll be doing with this, uh, but probably a lot more helpful to bring around if I had to leave the house, since this is definitely going to get pretty bulky um, and heavy. So yeah, if you have questions about anything, feel free to drop it in a comment below. Um, if you're looking for more from me, I did upload a faster version of my tab video um, last week and I have walkthroughs of my previous Hobonichi setups on my channel as well. So let me know what else you'd want to see from me. Uh, but be sure to subscribe for more and catch my more regular updates over on Instagram at A Week in the Life. Bye!